On today's episode, we are going to take a look at two growth stocks. And let me just start off by saying, no, they are not in the tech sector. So today's episode is going to be broken down into the following. For each stock, we're going to take a quick look at the overview of what they do, at their financial numbers, and just at the end, give my overall thoughts on both the businesses. Like always, my name is Jose Naharo. By day, I'm an electrical engineer, but by night, I'm a self-taught investor looking for new positions to add for my long-term portfolio. If this is your first time in the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit that thumbs up. It helps the channel out so much and i truly truly appreciate it remember nothing here should be taken as advice as i am not a professional the first company we're going to take a look at is boston beer company and then the second one is going to be beyond me let me know in the comments which one are you more excited about right now both of them are seeing amazing returns to investors and they're seeing amazing growth in form of revenue while you're down there you should also see a link to my discord channel it's free to anybody that wants to join i always post every time i buy and sell a stock there so feel free to jump in Finally, you should also see a link to Webull. If you sign up following that link, we both could get a free stock. I think right now they're running a special that we both get two free stocks. All right, so the first company we're going to take a look at is Boston Beer Company. This is ticker SAM, Sam, and probably most of my viewers know who they are already. Stock price for the day is up 1.6% when recording this video. Market cap right now is $11.4 billion. Year to date returns have been 151% to investors. So, congratulations to anybody holding long. They are currently sitting at $930. And I might be getting uh i feel like sometimes people complain about stock prices and as an investor the last thing you should be worrying about is the stock price what you really should look at is the market cap and if you don't have a broker right now that has fractional shares you should completely change over fractional shares is the best thing in my opinion for us retail investors who have less than a hundred two hundred thousand dollars in a portfolio um right now from the all-time high sam is down about 14 percent um, from the highs that it saw in, in early October, late October, um, which was closer to a, a, over a thousand dollars. So just a quick explanation of what Sam does uh, or, or Boston Beer does for many of you guys. Many of you guys might know they are about the Boston Beer Company and they sell alcohol beverages primarily in the United States, but they're also in international. They offer their their main one is the Sam Adams but they also have hard ciders. Um, they have Twisted Tea, Truly Hard, um, Angry Orchid, Dogfish Head, Angel City, Coney Island, Concrete Beach, Wild Leaf, and Tora brand name. So they have, you can see them all up here in their website, all the different beverages and, and brands that they have. And one thing I do want to say is for a company with an $11 billion market cap, I'm not a fan of their website. It seems like someone... Um, pretty much just build it in a day and, and, and that was it. Uh, it it's pretty weak in my opinion um and, and it's so weird that i sometimes judge a company based on their website uh, but it, it's just like the first thing you see when looking at a company the company markets and sells in products to networks of approximately 400 wholesalers in the united states as well as international wholesalers and also importers and then those are the people who sell it to restaurants who sell it to bars and to all those uh, stadiums and clubs and everything else there so right now the main customer for boston beer are these wholesalers and these importers and then from there they go on and those guys sell it to other people to the smaller chain of command so let's take a quick look at their most recent earnings so their most recent earnings for sam um, was quarter three non-gap earnings per share were six dollars and ten cents and it beat expectation by one dollar and 38 cents and this was on their most recent quarter which was their quor third quarter of 2020 which they reported october 22nd gap earnings per share were six dollars and 51 cents which beat expectation by a dollar and 74 cents so the first thing i'm seeing is they are profitable in both gap non-gap they're destroying expectations right now revenue was 492 million dollars up 30.2 percent compared to the same time last year so we're seeing historical growth as well unfortunately it missed revenue by about 28 million not a big miss but i'm, I'm really happy to see that huge growth in earnings per share now let's take a look at historical charts of of sam and also what the future holds so the first thing we can see is revenue 
it, since 2018 we can see this uptick in revenue and the revenue growth is increasing for the next three to five years sam is expected to grow its revenue 25 point 28.5 annually on average anything growing over 15 percent, i consider a high growth stock so this is definitely a super grow stock by those standards another thing that i'm seeing is this company does have positive free cash flow from operations obviously we saw it is profitable and these earnings are expected to grow as the years progress and so is that cash flow from operations that's that's pretty impressive we're seeing a company that's seeing strong revenue growth in the past that's expected to see strong revenue growth in the future that has earnings and it's also cash flow from operations now let's take a look at that balance sheet that balance sheet is also pretty impressive if i may say so for sam sam right now has no debt whatsoever and they have about 157 million dollars in cash and let me tell you why this is pretty impressive normally companies like this where they have in the food and the beverages they usually have a lot of their assets in inventory and they usually have some form of line of credit or some form of debt where they're using to kind of like rotate that inventory um so they usually have some debt but sam at the moment has no debt and they have plenty of cash at hand they actually have more cash than they do inventory so that's a, a definitely pretty good for this type of business next i want to take a look at some technicals right i mentioned i am a long-term investor but i still like to look at technicals from time to time just to see how things are at the first thing i'm looking at is it overextended from its moving averages and we can see sam right now is actually sitting within its moving averages so that's a good thing it's not overextended the second thing i'm looking for is is there a volume within that area we're in have people been buying at that stock price so i use my volume profile which tells me the volume at what stock price um, people were buying the most and i'm gonna give you a huge range right now is the range i'm looking at is between 800 to 930 which is where we're at right now there is a lot of volume buying there and we can see this has been like a nice step for sam so that tells me that there is some decent support as well with the overall trend of the moving averages so that's also looking good unfortunately there is a big portion of weakness in this area between 550 and like 800 dollars so i do believe if one ever does break below that it's gonna be a very very sharp drop to the bottom again none of this was a guarantee to happen but it's just important to see where other people are buying so I, i'm really liking sam's right now i'm liking the type of revenue growth i'm liking that balance sheet the overall earnings are improving cash flow from operations are also positive strong historical growth as well right now was there not to like and at the end of this episode i'm actually gonna look at more of, of price to sales ratio to see if maybe uh, of how things are looking but now let's take a look at the second stock and the second stock like i mentioned is beyond me but before we get there below you guys should also see a link to seven investing.com where every month they recommend seven stocks for 17 dollars a month if you use my link or my promo code jose you get ten dollars off for the first month may i say yes this is an affiliate program but i use their services and would recommend it to anyone so now the second stock we're taking a look at is beyond meat this is ticker b y n d and i'm not sure i said the ticker for sam or for boston beer is sam ticker s a m to all my podcast listeners so right now stock price for beyond meat was up 2.5 percent for the day it's sitting at 137 dollars right now it has a market cap of 8.6 billion dollars year to date returns for beyond me are 82 percent again congratulations to any long-term holders right now it is down 29 percent from its all-time highs that it saw here in october so uh, unfortunately we probably do have some back holders right now hopefully we can see some good things in, in this and a quick analyst on the company so for those that don't know beyond me is a food company that manufactures markets and sells plant-based meat products in the united states and international they use brands like beyond meat beyond burger beyond beef beyond sausage beyond breakfast sausage beyond chicken beyond fried chicken and beyond meatball as we can see they are very creative with those different brand names the company sells its products in two ways it sells it through um groceries march mer merchandisers um uh, like costco uh maybe sam's club I'm not, and walmart i'm not sure if they're really in there but those are examples of more mass merchandises also in convenience stores 
natural retailer channels, and they also do direct to consumers, restaurants, food services, outlets, and schools. So an example of a food service outlet is, you know how they, they're working right here, in this picture with Pizza Hut. So that would be a food service outlet or a restaurant, um, for example, and then Dunkin' Donuts, I know they probably have some stuff with Starbucks right now. So that's pretty much what they do. They sell plant-based meat products. So let's take a look at their most recent earnings. So their most recent earnings, they reported, I, I believe, most uh, recently in November, and this is for the quarter of that ended September 30th of 2020. So quarter three non-GAAP earnings per share were negative 28 cents, which actually missed expectations by 33 cents. GAAP earnings per share were negative 31 cents, which missed, missed expectation by 37 cents. So we can see the first thing is Beyond Meat is not profitable in GAAP earnings per share or non-GAAP earnings per share. And one thing I do want to say, right, um, even though they're both in, I want to say, the food food industry, obviously Sam Adams is more in the alcohol beverage industry. The food industry, especially since Beyond Meat deals with restaurants and food services, they have seen a decrease with the overall COVID situation taking a big hit right right now people are not going out to restaurants people if people aren't going to restaurants i mean restaurants are not ordering as much as products as they previously have done revenue for this quarter was 94.4 million dollars and this is actually up 2.7 percent compared to the same time last year so that is pretty impressive if i may say so even though COVID situation was not happening last year, and it is happening this year, so there was a huge lowdown in, in their revenue, they still are doing better than compared to the same time last year. And that's because of all the brand new deals that they have been pumping out and working on with all these different food services. So we can see 2020 year to date returns, they're seeing right now 115% growth in US retails. They're seeing 4% growth in U.S. food service. They're seeing 135% in international retail, and they're actually seeing a decrease of 34% of international food service in, in regards to revenue. So now let's take a look at, at some charts. First thing we're seeing is that revenue growth has been happening since 2018. Strong revenue growth. Obviously, there was a slowdown during this year due to COVID, but many analysts believe that growth will continue. Beyond Meat is expected to grow 32.0% on average annually for the next three or five years. Another hyper growth stock. One thing I don't like about Beyond Meat right now, it is not profitable and it does not have positive cash flow from operations. It does seem by the end of 2021, analysts are expecting it to have both positive cash flow from operations and positive earnings. So that's only a year away. But it's even though they're still not profitable when we take a look at that balance sheet i'm gonna try to be a bit strict because they need to have cash at hand to be able to survive right now when they're not profitable and when they do not have positive cash flow from operations if we take a look at their balance sheet the first thing i'm seeing is they have about 50 million dollars in debt but they have 214 million dollars of cash in short-term investments this means this company has a very strong balance sheet it'll be able to pretty much pay off all its debt and be, and still have plenty of cash left over the other thing i wanted to mention is their right now their founder only holds 2.49 percent of the total company and unfortunately i did not mention this about sam's but sam's ce founder is and chairman of the board actually owns 23 percent of the business that is a huge portion um, and i'm pretty impressed to see that kind of ownership right now so next let's take a quick look at some technicals on on beyond me the first thing i mentioned right this company lost almost 30 percent from its all-time highs we can see this huge drop right now so the first thing i'm trying to see is it overextended obviously the answer to that right now it is no it is not overextended the second time is are we in an area where there's a nice amount of volume of price action to really support this price at the moment and yes we can see this is actually the point where beyond me is has the most the most volume it has since february this means this is where a lot of investors are buying in and this is between 115 to like 135 dollars around the price where it's at so that tells me that there is plenty of support here remember i'm a long-term investor so i don't really want to take do look too deep into technicals i just take more of a high view 
quick look and see how things are doing. Is it overextended? And is there support within that range I'm looking at? So what do I like about Beyond Meat? First, we're seeing growth. Uh, future growth is expected to be amazing. Current growth right now is pretty slow, but it's still growing despite the fact that we're in a pandemic right now and restaurants are actually taking a big hit because of it. It does have a very strong balance sheet, and but unfortunately, there are a few things I don't like. I feel like there's a few more things I don't like about Beyond Meat than Sam's uh, or Boston Beer right now. The first thing I don't like is it's not, it's not profitable. It doesn't have positive cash flow from operations. And even though... And beer and alcohol, for example, is something that's been going on for ages and ages and ages. And that's not something that I believe will change dramatically in the future. Unlike plant-based protein, where now it's really becoming very popular. And again, one doesn't know how much is this more of a just a popularity thing that is only gonna or a fad that is only gonna last for a few a few years, or is it something that's here to stay? And I do believe that's probably one of the biggest risks when investing in plant-based companies. Um, so that's just some one of the things in the back of my mind. So now let's so now let's take a quick look at both companies side to side and my overall thoughts. But before we do that, guys, don't forget to check out my second channel, Jose Naharo Entrepreneur. I drop new videos every Friday, Sundays, and Wednesdays. And if you guys also want to keep continuing to support the channel, make sure to check out the merch. Sam right now in forward price to sales ratio is sitting about 4.68 for December 2021, wherefore Beyond Me is 13.23. So Beyond Me is a lot more expensive than Sam right now. And the only thing I want to say is Beyond Me, I, I guess investors still believe that since it's a huge growth stock right now, this growth is going to continue for many years to come where Sam might only be experiencing this type of growth for only the next few years where they expect Beyond Me to have much more growth in, in the future. And, and that's the only thing I can see. To be honest, I do like both these companies and I do believe that both of them would be a nice fit in a portfolio. If I was looking for more positions outside of tech stocks, these two would definitely be ones I would think about. Right now, I'm not too sure if I want to enter a position in them, but they have definitely made my watch list for me. If these even drop a bit more, I would gladly pick any of them up. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Let me know what you guys thought. Let me know if you guys like this, where I pretty much talk about two growth stocks that I don't even have in my portfolio and just try to learn more about them. So take care, guys. Have a good night. Don't forget to check out that second channel. I mean it, guys. It's it, it, I would really, really appreciate the support um, with helping out there on the second channel. Get some more subscribers there and hope you guys enjoy the content. Take care. Have a good night and see you next time. <music>